Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand. In the world of woodworking, there's a lot of animal life. I'm sure once you think about it, you'll come to recognize there are bullnose planes, there are cat's paws, there are bench dogs, there are sawhorses, there's all manner of animals in woodworking. We've talked at length about the rabbit plane, even though it's spelled differently from the animal, but today we're going to be talking about the badger plane. So the badger plane. The badger plane is basically a larger form of rabbit plane. You might be wondering why it's called a badger plane, and there are different theories, but one of the more popular ones is that this kind of plane was invented by a chap called Charles Badger way back in 1864. He worked for the firm of Badger and Gilpin, and you can still find reprints of old catalogues. Anyway, it was invented in order to make fielded panels a little easier. It does what a rabbit plane does, which is essentially to cut a groove at the side of a piece of wood. And it does it in the same way that a rabbit plane does it. The blade extends all the way to the, to the side of the plane. If you look at the badger plane, you can see that indeed the blade is not only skewed, which makes planing against difficult grain a little easier, but it, it extends all the way to the edge, meaning that you can plane a rabbit right up to the corner of it. Now I have two rabbit planes here, and I'm going to talk about the differences in both of them, and then I'll show you what they both do. This is the most common rabbit plane. It's about the same length or a little longer than a, than a jack plane, but most noticeably, it has a skewed and tilted blade. It's bedded, the iron that is, a little higher than you find in regular planes. Uh, it's usually about 50 degrees, but one corner of the blade comes all the way into the corner. Otherwise, apart from the higher angle and the fact that the blade extends right to the edge, it's very similar to uh, the usual common or garden jack plane. Here is a more sophisticated version of a badger plane. This has the same kind of blade that comes all the way to the edge, but on the corner that's subject to most wear, this plane is boxed, meaning it has a strip of really hard wearing boxwood all the way down the side. Furthermore, in order to ensure that the very inside corner of the rabbit is perfectly clean, this one also has a little knicker or a little spur. Lastly, making this plane a little more superior to the others, you'll notice that the tote, or the handle, is recessed into the sole. So not only does the angle of the handle allow you to make best use of any effort that you're putting in the plane, but you're doing it at a lower center of gravity. So this particular plane really is a superior badger plane. But both of them developed originally from this kind of plane. And we'll talk about this in future episodes. This is a plane that's designed specifically to make a fielded panel. A fielded panel is simply a panel of wood that sits in a frame and it leaves a raised surface called the field. And then there's a sloping side all the way around the edge. And then there's a straight bit that's designed to fit into the grooving. The reason that 
Mr. Charles Badger invented this kind of plane was to make wider fielded planes. It kind of has the disadvantage that it doesn't make the straight bit that fits into the field, but it had the wonderful advantage of being really useful for making really big long rabbits. And that's what we can do today and with great use. So I'm now going to show you how to use, there's basically two methods of using both of these planes. Of the two ways of using a badger plane, probably the simplest way is if I wanted to make a really wide rabbit on this piece work piece here, is I would clamp, just as I have done here, a guide so that the plane will rest against the guide that I've clamped to the workpiece and I can simply take a nice rabbit. And you'll notice how nicely the shavings come out and you'll notice that they're just a tad thicker on the inside than they are on the outside but by running the plane against the fence that I've clamped I can take a rabbit. I could use this for as long a piece of what I wanted and I could go down as far as I wanted. That's the first way of using a rabbit plane. The second way of using a badger plane is to start off with a plow plane or a grooving plane or whatever you happen to have in your shop and make a groove that is positioned where you want the rabbit to be, where you want the, the panel plane, the, the plane to be. So I've made a groove here. Now I use the groove as a guide for the badger plane by tilting the badger plane so that the side of the stock rests against the groove. So you can see that as I do this bit by bit, I begin to remove the outside part of the groove. And I just keep doing that until I'm down to the level established by the plow plane, at which point I slowly bring the badger plane upright until it's making a bottom that's perfectly flush. Now you can see that the badger plane is being held almost completely vertical. It's guided by the far edge of the groove and the rabbit is now almost perfectly flat. Those are the two ways of using a badger plane, which is particularly useful if you've got really long rabbits to use. And also, as we'll see in a later episode, it can be a very useful way of making a raised panel because the planes designed specifically to make raised panels are limited. They have a fillet here that defines the raised field, but they also have a stop here. This doesn't have a stop. So if you're in a position where you want to make really wide fielded planes, the Badger plane is the plane to use. So they're not very common, but when you find something that looks to all intents and purposes like a jointer plane, but when you look underneath, you see that the blade, the iron comes all the way to the end, you'll know you've found a Badger plane. And I can heartily recommend that you pick one of those up. So I hope that was useful. Don't forget to, if you want to know uh, more interesting things that we're going to be talking about, to hit the subscribe button and the like button, the little bell that comes up. Uh, feel free to email me. I'll answer questions. And good luck with your woodworking.